because you got the information, thank you very much, just because you got the information doesn't mean that you understand it, doesn't mean that you test on it. So let's get going, this is going to be our first lecture, and again, take notes, take notes, study the notes, take a video, review it before you come back in here and take the test. Okay, before we got, before you got a wood shop, you called this a board. Now, I may refer to it as stock, S-T-O-C-K, stock. This is a piece of stock. And now I say, take your stock, go over the planer, plane it out about a quarter of an inch off of that, and you go, that's not stock, that's my, that's my um, cutting board. I don't know what it is not there right now. I can't tell if it's a box, a cutting board, a birdhouse, I have no idea. So right now we'll refer to it as stock. I may say board, I may say stock. We all need to speak the same language so that we know what we're talking about. There are six sides to a board or a piece of stock. But two of them, they, they repeat. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and this one. So there's only actually three names. The anatomy of the board would be, one, this is the face. This is the face of the board. This right here would be the edge grain. This would be the end grain. Wonderful. Face, edge grain, end grain. We don't like the end grain. Why don't we like it? It's porous, it's real, real open grain, and it's hard to paint, hard to stain, so we try to hide it as much as we possibly can. There are four different types of cuts that we're going to go over in here. This cut that goes with the grain is called a rip. This is a rip. When I go against the grain or across the grain, it is a cross cut. This is a, that is an angle cut. There is one angle that is real specific. What is that one? That one is a miter, and how do I know what's a miter? 45 degrees. 45 degrees is a miter. So now we have a rib cut, cross cut, angle cut, and the last cut is a curve, arc, radius, or irregular shape. Curve, arc, A-R-C, radius, R-A-D-I-U-S, or irregular shape. Those are the four types of cuts that you're going to make on a piece of stock. And now we have, we're going to go over two major classes of wood. The two major classes of wood are hardwood and softwood. Hardwood and softwood. If I'm driving down the road in the winter, it's December, driving down the road, how do I know if it's a hardwood or a softwood? Whether, it, whether it's alive or it has leaves or not. If the tree has no leaves on it, that tree is a hardwood. It's a hardwood, a deciduous tree or a hardwood. If the tree is still green, that wood is softwood. softwood. It is softwood or a coniferous tree, a coniferous tree, because that tree has cones or pine needles. It is a coniferous tree, an evergreen tree. So. That's fine if I'm driving down the road, but you people are going to go over there and you're going to grab a piece of stock and you're going to have to be able to identify whether it's a hardwood or a softwood. I'm not going to go over there and I'm not going to put all your wood out for you. You're just going to go over and grab pieces of wood. And you have to be able to discriminate between hardwood and softwood. Not only that, you're going to have to be able to tell species. You're going to have to know four species of wood in here. Right now, I'm going to hold up one board. Can you tell me if this is just a hardwood or softwood? So what is this? Not species. Hardwood or softwood? Uh, hardwood. How many people got hardwood? How many people got softwood? Woo-wee! Softwood. Why did they say, why did everybody say this is softwood? Which it is. What did you recognize right away? The knots. Knot, knot, knot. Nah, nah, nah. These little things are knots. Knots in the board. 
And the knots are actually came from the limbs. Those were limbs in the tree. If you drive down the road and you saw that pine tree, you saw lots of little branches, limbs coming off of that tree. That is a softwood tree. So if you see an awful lot of loop, because how do we, how, right now, how do I know this is a softwood? It has some characteristics about it. One, it's, it's light. Softwood is light. We good? Softwood is light. Okay? Also, how do I know it's a softwood? It's soft. I can sit here right now with my thumbnail and I can write in this board. It is soft. It's light. And, of course, it's got all the knots in it. So, conversely, hardwood. How do I know about hardwood? What would I say about it? Yeah. It's going to be hard because it's dense. I can't hardly scratch this board. Hardwood. Also, it's for its size, it's going to be heavy. It's going to be heavy. And lastly, there's going to be very few knots in it. Very few knots in it. Very good. So now we know the difference between hardwood and softwood. Now we need to know two species of hardwood and two species of softwood. Right away we said this is soft. And a lot of you people know this species. What species is it? Cedar. Cedar. This is cedar. So on this, the best you can do is just tell me what you see. What do you see that's really obvious about this? It's red. Not only is it red, usually cedar's marble. It's two color. Red and either the yellow or the white. Red, yellow, or white. So in other words, Somebody last class made a box, and they made their box completely out of cedar. cedar. Look at all the knots, look at the red, look at the white. This is a cedar box. Okay? Let's go, to, let's stay with softwood. This board is a harder soft. This is softwood. There's a knot. Oops, there's a knot. Hmm. Anyhow. This thing is about as light as can be. This is very, very light work. What is it? Now species. Nice. This is fine. Tell me what you see. Good. Either yellow. Wait a minute. So tell me what the species is complete. Nice. Very nice. Again, problem solving, thinking, critically thinking class. I will lead you to an awful lot of stuff, and sometimes the question or the answers are so painfully obvious. So we could have either spruce or pine or Douglas fir. This is probably a yellow pine. Very nice. Very nice. Now let's go over to this board. Okay, this one is dark, definitely dark. Hardwood or softwood? Hardwood. Hardwood. It's dark. Probably the only one we're going to have in here that's this dark. And this is? Walnut. Oh, very nice. Dude, no, we got a ringer. This is walnut. Black walnut. This is nice, pretty, pretty stuff. Uh, very expensive. Did your brother do a table on black walnut? Red oak. That's right. But this is really expensive stuff. Very expensive wood, but boy, it sure comes up pretty. And lastly, this guy right here. Good. Hardwood or softwood? Hardwood. Hardwood. And it is? Okay. What, what, what one might you confuse this with? You're not going to confuse it with this guy. And you're not going to confuse it with this guy. You might confuse it with? Fine. So we better be able to tell the difference. These guys look about the same size? Do they look about the same size? You want to hold these? And? Yeah, much. This room is understandable. Yeah. Almost got you to the ground. Yeah. You can tell the So, if you're going to have to tell the difference between the two, definitely weight is a big factor. Big difference. Yes, sir. Yes. So that last, that last one we went to is going to be oak. That's the hardwood. 
So you'll be able to tell the difference between them. And also that pine is a lighter color too. Okay. Okay, very good. So we went through the species. Can we go through some joints? When we put when we get wood over here, we don't have boards that are going to be this wide. We have to glue wood together. We have to, let's say we have to fasten wood together. And when we fasten wood together, one way to fasten wood together would be the bungee joint. Nail. Actually, we could fasten it with a nail or a screw. screw. But we don't want to do that in here. If you've got a cutting board that's got a bunch of nails and screws in it, that's no good. That doesn't look good. That's not good for anybody. We don't want to have furniture or the stuff in here. So what we choose to do when we can, sometimes we'll put it in there if it's decorative or if it calls for nails or screws. But for the most part, when we join wood together or fasten wood together, we glue our stuff together. We'll glue pieces of wood. And to do that, we'll use different types of joints that help hold it together. Right here, I'm going to take these two boards, two little pieces of stock, and I'm going to glue them together. Right now, I'm going to glue, and this is real important, because I know some of you people will try to take a shortcut. Don't do this. Glue this side, then glue this side. Spread it, spread it, and then butt them together. And I know some of you people will do this. You'll run a bead of glue down here, that's it. You won't spread it, and you'll put it together. Your joint will not be as strong as if you were to glue this, glue this, and spread it. Why? Because you're giving time for the glue to get into the wood. As you're gluing this one, it's soaking in. Gluing and spreading this one, it soaks in. Once it soaks in and then it adheres, it adheres to each other, to itself, it forms a weld, almost a real weld right there. If you do a joint, any kind of a glue joint, any kind of a glue joint properly, and you go ahead and break the board, break the piece, it should break here, 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 anywhere but the joint, if you do it properly. And sometimes we'll get in here and we'll have a piece of scrap and we'll break it and we'll see if it, how it works. But if you do it properly, it should weld these two together. So when you go, we'll put this on here, we'll put this on here, and I butt these two pieces together. This joint is called a? This is a butt joint. This is a butt joint. What kind of joint is this? Butt joint. What kind of joint is this? That's it. These are all butt joints because I just simply butted those two together. Before we talked about um, not liking the end grain. It's porous, it's not really good. So later on, you're gonna make a picture frame. When you make a picture frame, we can just take a piece of stock like this that's 90 and another one's 90. We can butt them together like this and start making a picture frame, correct? We could. Yeah, we could, but we don't like the looks. That's not a good look. I got, I got that end grain there, it's not good. Oh, I know, I'll cover it up like this. Now I've got end grain there, not good. So there's got to be a way around that. Sure enough, we could take and cut an angle on each piece of stock. And this angle is called a miter. This is a miter. This is a miter. That miter is what degree? 45. 45 and 45. 245s make a 90 degree. That is a miter joint. This is a miter joint. Okay, very, very nice. We're going to come over here, and I've got a little slot cut in this board. Maybe hard for some of the videos to pick up, but there's a little slot. Now, you need to tell me a little bit more about what you see. How deep is that slot? Half the stock. It is half the thickness of the stock. I can now glue another board on it like this, I can glue it like this, however I glue it. This joint is called a rabbit, R-A-B-B-E-T, R-A-B-B-E-T. R -A -B -B -E -T. This is a rabbit joint. Where am I going to use this joint? Where are you using it? Project. Why? Very good. How come? 
So in other words, if I make a picture frame, if I make a picture frame, somewhere I'm going to have to put the glass. So I cut a miter here, I cut a rabbit joint all the way around here, so I can put the glass in there, the glass goes in, the picture goes in, and then a board goes on the back. So on this project alone, you're using a rabbit joint and, and a miter joint. Very nice. Very nice. As long as we're talking, as long as we're going over some of this stuff, let's, let's, let's take a little look and explore. Joint. What joints used in this box? What? Okay, very nice. Show me, tell me where. Maybe not. They might have found wide enough board. Sometimes you're not going to find a board this wide, so they may glue together three or four. Somebody started a box over there, and you can see they use butt joint. So basically, they started, your first project is what? Cutting, cutting board. board. Your first project is a cutting board. Joints? Butt joint. Butt joint. That's it. You got a butt joint in there. Just glued all these together. So then your next project was a picture frame. And then this project was, they, they went, huh, I want a fancy one. So they glued together different boards. So they got stripes in theirs. And then after that, I'll pass that around. After that, what joint did they use? What Miter. joint? What? Miter. They used a miter. These corners are all miter. If you look at that, do you see any end grain? No. There's no end grain. Did they use miter in that? No. Yeah. All the time. Two. Two of them they used miter in the city bus. Miter joint, miter joint, miter joint. So you said you don't see any end grain. The stuff you're, losing, you're learning right now is going to help you make furniture. The stuff that you're learning right now, when you go into second year woods, you're going to use all these joints and all these techniques. Last joint that you need to know is this guy. How does this differ from a rabbit joint? Yes, it's somewhere in the middle. Exactly. It's the same depth, it's half the stock, but it's somewhere in the middle. So now I've got a joint, wow, talk about a tight joint. Without glue, this thing holds really well. Without glue, it holds really well. This guy's called a dado joint, D-A-D-O, D-A-D-O, dado joint. Okay, we have one last thing to go over. Saw, this is a hand saw. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little cut here in the board. So can I get a couple, two, three people hold on to that? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a cut. That's this isn't a work worth a darn. What am I doing wrong? I don't have enough support. I'm way out here trying to cut. This area right here, all this is not supported. So if I'm trying to make a cut here, this just doesn't work well. So let's bring this back and let's bring it back about as close as I can so that it is supported when I make my cut. Now when I make my cut, I'm looking at one, two strokes. I have an upward stroke and I have a downward stroke. One of them cuts. Which one? It's a downward stroke. Why is it cutting on the downward stroke? Because I've got my weight with me and also I've got Gravity. Gravity working with me, and I get the weight. So I can be able to cut on the downward stroke. Then what is the upward stroke for? Just, just to reposition the saw. I got to reposition the saw, get the sawdust out of here. So then I'm over here cutting. And before this, everybody used to cut like this. And everybody drove themselves crazy. Now that you know how to cut, you can go, okay, I cut on the downward, reposition. Put my pressure on the downward stroke and reposition. And I can go ahead and I can cut. Real simple.
Okay? And now I need somebody. Well, let's do this. Can we, let's get a little bit of stock out here. I do need to get some out here to show what I'm going to show. <laughs> and can you finish my top <laughs> you are going to get dirty in this class all the time. And as you cut, I go, cool. Excuse me one sec. Go ahead. Can you keep cutting? Now pay attention very, very closely. Go ahead, cut. Yep, go ahead, cut. Go ahead, cut. Now I'm going to help. No, you're looping. You're not cutting. You're changing the blade. Oh, you're looping. Hold on. Let me help. Good. Who are you? <laughs> Jose says, Jose, that's all. Jose says, dude, you're not helping in the least. You're screwing me up. Stop doing that. Right? Okay. Did I do that to make Jose look stupid? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I didn't. So I did this to make a point. Jose is cutting and cutting along and everything's going real well. Then I say, I'm going to help. And I grab this end of the board and I pick it up. Yeah. And he says, you're not helping. What am I doing? Pinching the blade. Pinching the blade. So I want to show you something really pretty cool. If I take this board or this piece of stock and I look at this, we cut, we cut a cut in the board that is actually wider than the blade itself. What? How's that possible? Watch, I'll prove it to you. That baby just falls right in there. That thing falls right in there. How did you make a cut that is actually wider than the blade itself? This is how we made a cut. Hold it, look down. Each one of those teeth are bent at a different angle. So the teeth side is wider than the back of the blade. So the teeth are all bent at a different angle. So now I've created a cut or a gap that's wider than the blade itself. That is called kerf, K-E-R-F, kerf. That is called kerf, K-E-R-F. Now, that being said, that being said, let's pretend this is a table saw. You are now the table saw. Hold on to that. This is the table saw. I am now going to cut this board. Pay attention. I'm now going to cut this board on the table saw, and I'm going to push this way, and I'm going to push this way. When I get a cut in here, I'm going to push it both of them. What's going to happen? That blade is going to get, it's going to pinch. I'm going to close the curve. I'm going to pinch the blade. When I pinch the blade, something's going to go. That board's coming back at me. Here's the difference. Jose is smart. Jose is okay strong. Not real strong, okay strong. But he's smart. The table saw is just the opposite. The table saw is very strong. Three horsepower motor on it. Stronger than all of us put together. Three horsepower motor. We ain't stopping it. It is not going to stop. But the table saw is incredibly stupid. It doesn't know when to say, stop. Well, Zay was smart enough to go, stop. I'm not going to cut anymore until you stop doing that. You're pinching the blade. Stop. Okay. So then uh, the table saw doesn't say that. The table saw doesn't say, stop it. You're pinching the blade. It says, I'm going to just keep going. So something gives up. What's going to happen is when you go like this and you pinch the blade, it's going to keep going. That board's coming back to you. And that's called kickback. Kickback. We don't like kickback. We don't want kickback. Kickback will hurt you. Are you serious? In my one class, oh, uh, last school I was at, kid had kickback. Missed him, hit the wall, and broke into pieces. Yeah. Yeah, there's no board back there. And for some of you guys that are the wrong height, yeah, yeah. Some of you guys that are at the wrong height at the table saw, tall, if you're tall and that board's coming back, 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>